what it do defy rebels welcome back i'm air we're here for your daily update it is the 16th of june it is friday weekend is almost here you can almost taste it hope everyone's doing good lots of news to cover today binance being raided by french authorities over money laundering saying it was a regulatory obligation Binance also pulling out of the Dutch market, pulling out of the Netherlands. <laughs> Not looking good, guys. Uh, what else we got? We have some Tether FUD. We're going to kind of cover why it depegged yesterday. We're going to take a look at the charts. Bitcoin kind of lost that key level of about 25, 430 ish, and we dropped. We sank pretty hard pretty quickly. It actually stomped me out of my long along the bottom of this larger channel going all the way back to the top of the market 31k there from April. I have my stop loss set somewhere around here and it literally flash crashed pretty quickly down. I think it was like 2% something like that. One in a 1.45%. So I'm not in a position right now. So I'm looking to re-enter. I'm going to show you the key levels here. We're going to go over what all these lines mean spoiler alert blue resistance red support so we do have some tradable channels the market's acting like it should right now really we don't have a surprise yeah we were down pretty hard yesterday however we did hold the line where we should so we're going to take a look at it get you set up find the entries and what to trade this weekend cover a couple news pieces take a look at a few altcoins matic ada soul take a look at a few of those and just get you caught up set up and check in with you guys since it's been a couple of days so like comment subscribe turn on those notifications it helps us out and then last but not least hop in discord discord.gg slash defi rebels let's hop right into it the assault on binance continues so we have two pieces of news today so france is investigating binance for money laundering and netherlands shuts door on the exchange so the Paris prosecutor's office has opened preliminary inquiry against Binance. So the suspicion is illegally canvassing customers, right? And engaging in aggravated money laundering. So this was published from Le Monde today. And the announcement comes shortly after Binance said that it would be leaving the Netherlands because it has been unable to secure a licensing demonstrating that the firm complies with anti-money laundering rules of the nation. So the firm said in France, on-site visits, on-site visits by regulator, regulators and inspectors are part of the obligations that all financial institutions must adhere to. We had an on-site visit last week by the relevant authorities, a Binance spokesperson said. They also added, we're not going to comment, blah, 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 blah. So Binance's setback continues. It's a lot going on, pulled out of a lot of countries now. Canada, for example, we know the troubles that they're in in the U.S. with Binance.us. U.S. even going as far as to try and freeze their assets. Binance's offices were searched and evidence was discovered that is now under review by the French authorities. So that's where we're at. That's what we know. We don't know a lot. It's an ongoing investigation. I mean, you know how these things go. Neither sides want to comment on it. They're going to the lawyers hash it out not a good look it's not a good look especially too when they're in trouble in the netherlands in trouble in the netherlands uh, for not being able to comply with their anti-money laundering laws now in france they got raided for suspected alleged money laundering is it true i don't know you know maybe it is i have no idea who knows but we have to continue to watch this binance continues to be under assault you got to keep in mind you know this won't be the end all for crypto have a huge impact i mean it's having a huge impact as you see the markets right now and how they're reacting to this i mean this is just adding to the cascading effect it's adding to the low volume that we have right now it's adding to market sentiment so we're going to continue to watch this if you have funds or use binance maybe look to another exchange there's other exchanges out there personally we use mexc global as of right now thousand dollar beginning award lowest fees in the industry zero maker 0.1% taker fees, plus you get 10% commission kickback if you use our code, scan the QR code on the screen, or link is in the description below. This is just the tweet from Binance this morning saying that they regret to announce that Binance is leaving the Dutch market, unable to register as a VASP with the Dutch regulator. And then CZ tweeting out, basically saying no surprise, it's FUD saying that France continues to be our flagship center in Europe. This is just part of everyday business for financial institutions in, 
my voice just cracked in France. So let me know down below. What do you think? Well, we got two money laundering accusations going on with, with the Netherlands and France. CZ saying all this is FUD. Um, we know Sam Bankman Freed had his recent charges dropped, completely dropped. Is he working with prosecutors? Is that part of what's going on right now with all the FUD that's going on with Binance? Maybe. Lots of tether FUD going on right now at Did Depeg yesterday. Lots of people on Discord were asking what happened. First of all, it depegs once a month, once every other month. But it was from documents that were released from Bloomberg from 2021. So these documents included extensive amounts of Chinese paper, short-term lo loans to Chinese companies, including a sizable loan to Celsius Network. So this was a Bloomberg investigation published in October of 2021. Just got released though, found evidence that Tether's reserves did in fact include billions of dollars of short-term loans to Chinese companies, as well as a sizable loan to Celsius Network. Tons of third-party loans, small regional banks in the Bahamas, right? So mostly banked by small regional banks in the Bahamas, I should add. They're denied this exposure to Chinese paper during a phase when Chinese paper was trading at a steep discount. But that would align with these documents. So Tether's banking partners are pretty subpar banks based primarily in the Bahamas and Asia. And you mean you have to trust solvency of these banks as well. They did not, Tether did make loans of Tether against buying Bitcoin and Ethereum collateral to multiple parties, including Bitfinex. At one point, 5.1 billion in Tether was on loans against BTC or ETH, which was 20% of all Tether in 2021. The 2021 attestations by accountants did not address the large exposure to BTC or ETH as a call out and instead simply noted value in excess of liabilities. Also confirms that the Tether, that Tether made a loan to Bitfinex to cover its losses from the Crypto Capital Corp scam. So what we know, so as of 2021, Tether had exposure to private loan collateral for BTC and ETH covering up to 20% of Tether rather than just one to one. It had high exposure to Chinese commercial paper during shaky times. It worked where third rate banks, I'd never, you'd never deposit at. Has it cleaned up its act? It could have, right? I think it's decreased its exposure to commercial paper and crypto assets, but do I think it's a perfect safe one to one? less likely it's this guy's opinion and i doubt their banking partnerships have improved does that mean usdt is worth zero no but i also don't think you can take usdt at face value of a dollar especially during times of stress if tether has cleaned up its act to the point of being pristine they should simply release this level reporting details from last month as a side-by-side -side comparison for consumers to make their own assessment i can understand why they wanted this suppressed it's not the absolute zero that Tether truthers wanted, but it certainly shows the kinds of risks you are exposed to with Tether. And then he's just kind of adding in an Occam's razor here. So it's not that Tether set out to buy shitty stuff for profit, but that managing 20 to 80 billion is hard problem that most teams can't handle and need to grow into. That's very, very true. If that's the case, they should be able to prove that improvement. It's important to remember that no risk is zero or 100%. It's somewhere in between. My uh, time to move my sprinklers, right? Just like no stable coin is perfectly $1 when you factor in risk. It's all about which risks you and the market are willing to take. Chinese paper and Bahamian banks aren't on mine. If anything, Tether might have been saved by the massive rate hikes in the U.S., making it much easier to make large capital gains on safe assets. The things that killed some banks may have pushed them to safer construct in the portfolio. And they have. So as of now, Tether does use Cantor for Sherald, huge Wall Street bank. Um, Ambasher too, which is a bohemian bank, and both their parent companies are Dell Tech. So they have moved in the right direction is my point here. Is it enough, though, to stop the FUD? You know, I'll just, I'll tell you this right now. So if Binance and Tether fail, you know, I'm moving on from crypto at this point, cause we're going to see a, a, you know, $3,000 Bitcoin. I mean, if those two go down, the, the entire industry is so entwined 
in those two coins with Binance being like a 70, 80% of the market share and Tether being used on most exchanges for futures, for leverage, for, for everything, it would just, it would be bad. So just hope for the best, right? But prepare for the worst. So, I mean, if you have a ton of Tether, maybe diversify a little bit. Um, if you're using Binance, I would probably stop using Binance. Um, and that's not just trying to spread more FUD. That's just what I'm doing personally. I'm trying to protect myself, my investments, anytime anything like this happens, even if it's temporarily, right? I think both will be okay in the end though. That is pretty much it for the news. Not a lot going, I mean, there's a ton going on, but those are the two main stories that are kind of sweeping the news cycle today, especially with the Binance FUD. So let's take a look at the charts a little bit. You know, we've got a lot of movement going on. Let's refresh the bubble map. It's kind of a mixed bag, but lots of green in there. I don't really see, you know, a few red, Luna C, Ape, but mostly green across the board. Bitcoin pretty flat on the day though. It is a mixed bag of alts though. So when you kind of drill in here, you can see some are up, some are down. Bitcoin hasn't really made, it to, made up its mind today, pretty much where it was 24 hours ago. So you can see here, if we go to the four hour chart, I'm just going to show you. So we're still in that bigger channel. We have not left that bigger channel yet. We have not closed below the channel yet. So here you go. You got your support, bigger support, bigger resistance here. I did long the bottom of it, but that flash crash we just had stopped me out of my stop loss. So probably going to be looking for another position here. You got your key supports here, 22.9, 24.5. You got another one here that we lost 25 4. That's what caused that flash crash, real quick. And then you got your resistances, right? You got 25 6, 6, 7, 26 3, 26 7. Then the scenario to get bullish again, which if we break out, which these typically break out to the upside, you know, depending on where we break it out, it would technically take us above that. So these descending wedges typically do break to the top side about 70 to 80% of the time. That also means 20 to 30% of the time they break to the downside. So we need to be prepared for that as well. 21, 4, 26. How do you get prepared for that? Well, you trade these channels, right? So there's two main channels I'm watching right now. The first one is obviously the bigger one that I talked about. This goes all the way back to April, middle of April, that 31K top. And we've been trading in this channel since. And I know some of you are probably sick of me talking about it, but this channel has made me a shitload of money. So the smaller time frame channel I'm watching is this blue line, your resistance, this red line, your support here. So as long as you're trading these channels, as long as you're taking your longs off of support and you're shorting off of the resistances, but when you get to this one, since it's in the middle of the bigger channel, you kind of got to watch it a little bit. As long as you're doing that, you're going to be on the winning side of the breakout. It really is that simple. Let's get a quick peek at the current order book and where the orders sit. This is Binance. So you can see it still is real heavy down to about 24,500, 24,000, I mean, even 23,500, 23,000 there, pretty heavy. There is some liquidity above us up to 26,500, then it kind of thins out 27, 28,000. But the heavier magnets, the heavier pull is definitely still below us. That hasn't really changed. If we take a look at Coinbase, right? It's going to tell us pretty much the same thing. We've got a heavy volume in our range, not heavy. It's actually the lowest volume we've had in three years, but for what's on the order book in our current range, it is still the heaviest 24, 23, five, 22, five, not much above us on Coinbase. So again, 24,000 looking like a potential magnet. you know, does that come today? Probably not, but in the future, maybe unless something changes, especially about all this FUD, this huge onslaught happening, right? So liquidity, the larger moves for liquidations, as soon as it decides to load here, starts at 24.8. Well, here we go again. 24.8 is where it starts. And then the three times longs, we haven't tapped yet. Those start at 23.1,000. Those are all key levels we need to hold. So 24.8 we need to hold, 23.1,000, because then those three times long starts being triggered. These are large institutional whale orders that once we start triggering, people are going to be liquidated. So once that happens, it's like a cascading domino effect, right? We start ripping through them. So trade the channels. Are we going up or are we going down? Who cares, right? If as long as you trade these support resistances, you can see that all these on here, 
have have made me money all these lines red is your support blue are your resistances if we lose the red it's going to get ugly as you saw what happened today we lost this red line we sank down pretty quick we have regained it since we are still inside of this smaller channel here still inside of this medium channel here and still inside obviously of the larger channel here so as long as you play and trade these lines you're going to be fine we are currently still below all moving averages on the four hour chart. When I am looking at, are we bearish or bullish? I'm looking at moving averages. I'm looking at the trends. I'm a trend trader, trend line trader. I'm a swing trader, you know, a day trader or whatever, whatever you had, I'm a trader, but I'm using the four hour chart, the 21, the 50, the 100, 200, we are still all below it. So those are all going to act as resistance. As you can see, the 21 is currently acting as resistance. We're costing a little bit. Then we look to the 50, then the 100, then the 200 is at the current top of this smaller, or actually this is the bigger channel, right? It is at the top of the bigger channel. And we're starting to wind down into this channel. It's still big, right? This is that larger channel. It's still 7%. So there's still plenty of room to make money inside of this channel. So if we're looking at the daily, those moving averages, we're still well above the 200 we are still below the everything else. So kind of a mixed bag there. So since we are below everything else, we are targeting that 200 moving average, which right now sits at about 23,785. Still trending down on the CVDs. So we got your perp orders here, still trending down. We have your spot orders here, still trending down. Sell side dominant, sell side heavy right now. Whales dying off. Normal kind of middle of the road orders kind of have been picking up, but dropped off recently. This is a one hour chart, mind you. So every tick is one hour. And then your small orders are, are kind of dropping off too. So everything kind of cooling down a little bit at the moment. But those middle of the road orders kind of did have a little bit of a bump up until the 6th of June and just been kind of dropping off since. So still light, still light on the volume, still a kind of sell sentiment out there, right? I'm just going to show you a few things that I posted in Discord this morning. So Bitcoin's, though well, this is actually a couple days ago, this particular one. So Bitcoin's correlations to the stock indices, it has depegged. Bitcoin is completely depegged. So you have your NASDAQ, your Bitcoin, your S&P, and your Bitcoin here. Let me pull this up to make it a little bit better for you. And as you can see, it's just depegged. It used to be where we could count on the NASDAQ, the S&P 500 to help tell us which way Bitcoin is going to move. Crazily enough, it has completely depegged, which is which is odd. Well, today wise, though, we are seeing a gradual buildup of shorts again, right? The aggregate funding rate heading down, open interest heading up. So we are seeing gradually shorts building up again. So before we saw the opposite, right? We saw that the longs were building up and then we got that dumper ruski. So now we're seeing the shorts build up. Do we get a pump? Do we go up to the top of the market? Do we trade inside of the channel? I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but I'm telling you these channels never fail until they do. And then you're gonna be on the winning side of it because you've been taking these positions like I've been telling you too. So funding rate negative, spot basically dead. Futures taken up though. Coin M1s are stable, M's not so much. And then a lot of this other stuff we kind of already talked about. We post the news, we'll get you caught up. And then we also have our brag wall, right? I mean, um, you know, I was up $2,200 today. That's, I was up 9,000, but I got stomped out with that flash crash we had. Profit is profit. You know, uh, Bosco, 50%. Ryan, 20%. Ripto up. Kramer, 147. I was up uh, a couple days ago, 16,000, 1,700, 10,000, 25%. So hop on in. I mean, we're in here chatting small tight-knit community as you can kind of see here even playing diablo at night discord.gg slash defi rebels if you want a small tight-knit community of traders who are making money who are teaching people how to ta and make money and not shilling shit coins and getting you to lose all your money hop on in give us a try posted a couple of altcoins so we're going to talk right now about a few possible plays that i see so bnb rndr and matic have not been as focused on alts so i wanted to get a few out that kind of piqued my interest one being r n d r i'm targeting kind of that 1.6 a little under 1.4 1.84 if we can't 
retest if we can't get up past 2.118 so rndr looks dump like dump city so does matic right we cross below the line the threshold there targeting kind of 0.45 and 0.31 for matic and then binance coin you can see we lost this big trend line targeting 120 especially with all the fud right now man short this shit into the ground that's pretty much it guys i mean that's where we're at got you those key levels the channels we talked about uh bitcoin we got the dollar pumping up a little bit should be bad for all their assets everything's flat i mean bitcoin flat dow jones flat same 0.01 percent 0.1 percent on the s p so pretty flat we're at um you know an impasse impasse right now and just play these key support resistance channels and you'll do just fine do you have any questions you want something dug into further hop in discord again i'm gonna pimp it one more time discord.gg slash d5 rebels and we'll catch you guys later hope you guys have a good weekend i'll be in discord all weekend if something pops off i'll make a video otherwise you guys just enjoy your weekend